Hi, Doug here from X Frames FPV. I got a quick little video today, and this is going to be kind of a spec video and a review of a frame here. And this frame is from Reptile, and this is a clone of an alien by Impulse RC. This is the Martian 2. Um, I love this frame. I have built quite a few of these and quite a few of their predecessors, which is this little guy here. This is the original Martian. Well, maybe you can tell right away, but maybe not. Glaring difference here. Look at the difference in the size of that base plate. Way too long. Um, so, and very inaccurate to what the original alien was. With this Martian 2, this is extremely close to what the, the alien is. I had built two weeks ago for a customer an alien. And so I had a chance to really sit down and compare these two, and, and they're, they're quite similar. Um, base plates are about the same size. Everything else falls within um, just being really close. Another advantage to the Martian II, of course, is the 4mm arms as opposed to 3mm. Um, and the better PDB. This, this one has nothing. The Martian has nothing but the protector here this plate here that's fiberglass that kind of protects the PDB from the carbon fiber um, it's supposed to have just like in the Martian 2 it's supposed to have a PDB that goes over because that's part of its structural integrity um, and these did not come with it came with just a cheap little um, throw in the garbage PDB that's not worth anything so out with the old in with the new um, this is my first video, so I do apologize for uh, my lack of knowledge when it comes to making videos. Um, I'm a custom builder out here in Los Angeles, California, and have had some requests to do some videos, so I'm going to start doing that. already got the build started, uh, attached the arms, um, soldered up the PDB with a 5-volt regulator, and I did my normal rounding off the edges of all the leading edges and CA gluing them. What that does is um, stops the carbon fiber from kind of splintering in a crash, which happens a lot. It's one of the first things, especially on these base plates and top plates. And this um, rounding them off and CA gluing them really makes a difference. I do that on all my elite builds. Um, I have two series of builds that I do. One's called a pilot series and one's called an elite series. Pilot series is built to a price point and um, good components in them, but um, they are built to be as inexpensive as possible while still being able to be good enough to where you can actually be competitive in raising them. Um, this elite these Elite Series um, goes a step further with some of the prep of the frame and also the components, and we'll get to that right now. First off is the VTX. Um, this is the TBS Unify Pro. I love this little VTX. It's switchable between 20 and 800 milliwatts. Um, although if you do run 800 milliwatts, you do have to have a ham li license. And... Um, I do find that on 600 milliwatts it doesn't seem to be as good as my Lumineer is or my immersion on 600 milliwatts. So I think they're a little bit generous in their rating. However, still worth the money. Uh, they're about $20, 12 to $20 more than the standard. But the size of it and that you can switch between 25 and 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 really 600 milliwatts is just great. These only require 5 volts, so only need one voltage regulator. Only the 5 volt to power both the flight controller, camera, and VTX. Uh, quick tip on you know the immersion and also the Lumineer. They do say that you can run board power. In other words, you can run straight off your PDB. If you're running three cells, four cells, it won't hurt it. I will tell you though, over time, you will you will 
experience problems. It's going to shorten the life of that VTX because of spikes that go back through the PDB from the ESCs. So that's why if I'm wiring up any of those, I'm going to choose to do it with a 12 volt regulator. Okay, this TBS does not need that because it only has five, it requires five volts and so does the camera. So only one regulator needed on this and less is more, right? So we're gonna move on here to the ESCs. Well, these are the nice DYS XS30s, the new BL Heli S ESCs, and they are quite good. I have them on one of my builds and I've already, that I built for myself and also on a couple of them for customers, and they are extremely good. They're very, very fast. And with fast, you get smoothness because the faster the ESC is, the smoother it is because there's less gaps in signal. And you can see that from the second you arm these. You can literally see the props as they're spinning and because it's, con it's, it, it's remaining a constant. And so um, these are great, inexpensive. Um, I have put before the XS30 was the XM30s and I have put at least oh gosh maybe a hundred of those on different builds and just extremely happy no issues whatsoever so I'm expecting the same with these so that's what's going on there for ESC's for motors we're gonna go with these DYS SE2205's uh, I chose a 2550 kVs just for a little bit more power. And uh, these are the Pro Edition. Pro Edition, you get this nice, fancy, kind of goldish anodizing on the motor, which is nice. Nice to have something other than black. And then you also get these pads that you can just solder right to. Advantage of that, it's a much cleaner build. Especially if you're doing like a little B. You know, the little bees have the wires running right off of the the speed control. And so then all you got to do is clip and solder. Well, I still like it on these, even though I have to make my own wires. Because then I've got my own solder joint at each end. And I like how clean it looks. So that's the motor. Sorry about that. I had to pause while I went and grabbed my flight controller. This is my favorite uh, Boris B's F3, SP Pro F3. This is a great flight controller. Um, it doesn't matter what I put this on, right out of the gate it almost always flies smoothly without any tuning and then you can obviously get it to be what you want it to be from that point on. Um, great things like onboard buzzer, VBAT for vol voltage, um, lots of telemetry options, a lot of um, other options like L digital LED, which allows you to have programmable LEDs that can do motor arming, warnings, all sorts of different things. Um, so I love these. A, a note of caution, there's a lot of um, a lot of these F3 boards out there that are copies, and um, I have had multiple multiple problems with those and have chosen relatively quickly after trying the other ones that it's just worth the extra money because these you don't have problem with flashing the firmware on it you don't have problems with um, it just not connecting whatsoever not getting it to the bootloader to boot whatever it is um, these just work so I would suggest spending the extra money and support Boris B. And um, I love these flight controllers. So that's pretty much it on this, on this part of the video. I'll probably do another video that has different aspects of the build. Um, but thank you so much for sticking with me on this first video. And um, feel free to comment or any questions that you have. Be glad to answer them. I'll put my website and all of my social networking sites that uh, you can contact me on and don't hesitate to ask me questions. Um, I love helping people out. 
I've been in this industry since the early 90s. Um, obviously not the quadcopter in industry, but the RC industry. And um, I just love helping people. That's how I got started is people helping me, and I like to pass that on. So I hope you have a great day, and I hope you enjoy flying.